Hey guys, Stuart Charles here, homestudiobasics.com, helping you make sound decisions. Let's get into the IFI Micro IDSD Black Label. Wow, that was a mouthful. So first, this thing is like a multi-tool on steroids. If the HA2 was a Swiss Army knife, First of all, it can charge your phone via the smart power charging USB on the back right of the unit. So uh, confirmed, I am actually charging my phone right now with it. Plug the USB into the side, then the other end plug into a micro USB, and then plug the micro end into your phone. It can be plugged into your PC via the big blue USB cable that comes with the, that comes with the unit. You're my boy, Blue! That was stupid. It can be used as a gaming rig. Just plug the optical Toslink adapter into the SPDIF jack on the back of the unit and have yourself an afternoon delight. I still have not tested this yet, but I was under the impression that it just had a Toslink uh, port on the back, but you do have to plug in the adapter and then plug in the optical cable into that. It can be plugged into a receiver, preamp, studio monitor, or anything that outputs RCA, so I thought that was neat. For this, it's got to switch towards the back for direct mode or preamp mode. Make sure that you're on the right setting. Obviously, you're going to be on preamp if you plug this into, say, for instance, some studio monitors. It can be plugged into anything that outputs SPDIF. This is great for any variety of home theater type of units. So a lot of stuff that my old man has will probably do well with this. It can be used with your phone via its 3.5 millimeter line out on the front. It's got an X bass switch on the front and a soundstage enhancer, which actually works beautifully. Uh, we'll get into that in a bit. On the side, you've got a power mode switch featuring. Uh, featuring. <laughs> you've got a power mode switch featuring eco, normal, and turbo mode. This is one of its best features and allows for extreme versatility based on the headphone that you're using. On the side, you've also got a polar polarity switch and a filter featuring bit perfect, minimum phase, and standard. The polarity didn't do much for me. I, I contacted Lawrence at IFI and he sent me some literature that I need to go through. The bit perfect, minimum phase, and standard, it did do a bit to the sound, but not in any way where it radically changed it. It's hard to describe what it actually did, but it does do something. It's got an IEM match switch for high sensitivity or ultra sensitivity IEMs and headphones. So just think uh, 32 ohm and lower with over 100 decibels of sensitivity. You're going to want to switch that on to prevent blowout. But with this thing, I can honestly keep it on eco most of the time with most headphones. Like I've never had to use the, it's, it's never been imperative to use normal mode on any headphone that I've used. But then again, I have not plugged in an Odyssey. I plugged in the Odyssey LCD2, but of course that's pretty a pretty efficient headphone at 101 decibels. The Odyssey LCD4 and 3, I believe are around 91. So this amp will be a perfect match for like those types of headphones because it just has a ridiculous amount of power, which we'll also discuss in a bit. This review is already getting out of hand. Yeah, it's got enough juice to power a small country. The best part though is how it makes your headphones sound. Clarity, dimension, detail, accuracy, spacing, timbre is all on point. This may be the only amp deck you'll ever need. I would consider this and the Mojo probably about the ceiling of what I would pay for. You may get better sound quality out of a, a really, really expensive setup, but the differences are gonna be fairly subtle. I've heard a lot of amps ranging in the $2,000 range, and I would say that it's not gonna be a night and day difference. You're gonna get more than enough here at five, about 500, so. Yeah, so I think in terms of sound quality, the IFI Black Label is just incredible. I would liken it to something like a Chord Mojo. They're very, very close uh, competitors, obviously, in the same general price range of about $500. The Mojo was my previous um, end game. I think this, this one does slightly edge it out because of everything it can do. I would say the Mojo might be a little bit it might give you a bit of a warmer tilt to the sound, but still incredibly detailed. I probably would prefer the Mojo over this very, very slight edge in terms of sound, but overall, I'd probably purchase one of these and call it a day because it, it's just so versatile. Get yourself a good headphone, plug it into this, and just run Tidal with lossless files and just be taken away. It's just, it's that good. Do be aware that the amp will uh, reveal bad source quality files like for instance if you're if you're running lossless untitled you will start to hear a lot of the errors and artifacts in music like i was listening to some old zeppelin records a lot of those old recordings have been remastered but you can still hear a lot of 
um, the mistakes in the mix. It doesn't ruin the experience, actually. It kind of, in a strange way, adds to it, in my opinion. But I was listening to a lossless version of Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For by U2 out of the black label on Eco with the Philips SHP 9500, and I was bawling my eyes out, no joke. Uh, it just sounded that good. There was a moment, and I, I forgot to mention this in my last review. There's a point in the song about halfway where, and you can kind of hear Bono's voice. Like He, he, uh, he lets out this like interesting um, utterance that is so, so subtle that you would never hear it. Like I've, I've heard that song a thousand times. I've never heard him, but it was sort of like a, a wail, but it's hard to explain. It was like a, uh, he just lets out this like, I can't even describe it, but you can hear the subtlest of details going on. And that was one thing that stood out to me. You can use the bass switch and the soundstage enhancer. I find that the 3D plus setting really helps with a headphone like the HD 600 with its narrow image. It really did um, widen the image quite a bit to where I was super impressed. Like. The HD 600 on its own doesn't have very good soundstage, but the black label does improve that to a degree. I wouldn't call it night and day, but you will notice uh, things are better spaced out, and that only adds to the uh, amazing instrument separation that the 600s already have. It just adds some extra um, width and space. So. so as far as power output, we just briefly touched on in turbo mode, which you'll probably never need. It outputs 1,560 milliwatts at 64. Oh my God. For a headphone like the LCD4, LCD3, or like something like an AKG 240, 600 ohm, or even a K702, 701 at 91 decibels. And a lot of hi-fi mans have pretty low sensitivity. Not very efficient. I honestly don't even think that any of those headphones would require turbo. I think you could probably get away with uh, the normal setting, which is 950 milliwatts at 32 ohm and 100 milliwatts at 300 ohm. And eco mode provides 250 milliwatts at 16 ohm. So, so not only is it more powerful than explosive diarrhea, but it's also got a very low output impedance. This ensures consistent output across all types of headphones and spec ranges. Build quality is absolutely phenomenal as well. It's compact enough where you can kind of take it around with you. It is fairly portable. Even given um, how incredibly complex the freaking thing is, you can put it on your desk, obviously. So it's just kind of like a jack of all trades amp, and I just absolutely love it. Or the volume knob feels really good when it clicks. The bass boost switch and soundstage switch also feel really, really good. All the inputs feel really good, and they even come with these little um, rubbery kind of encasements that you put over the the output jacks on the back to, to protect them so that's cool build quality overall perfecto so last but not least we'll just go into what it comes with there is a nylon slash felt i don't know exactly what it's made out of but it's really plush it feels good <laughs> it's a drawstring case and it's just it's really high quality but to be expected i think from a a unit in this price range. It also comes with a USB three patch cable. One end is male, the other female. A smaller OTG light cable with a USB B port, a USB A to USB B converter, a 3.5 millimeter to 6.3 millimeter jack adapter, a cable with 3.5 millimeter jacks at both ends. So just an, um, a 3.5 millimeter interconnect basically. Uh, a small slab of silicone, two rubber bands, four rubber feet, and a partridge in a pear tree, and an optical adapter, which we discussed. It also comes with a long rectangular type of rubber foot you can put underneath there, as well as the RCA cables that we discussed earlier. Final grade, A minus. One small issue that I found in Tidal was, and this did not happen with other amps, so I'm thinking that it's um, the black label. Sometimes it just randomly cuts out, like the music will stop, and I don't know why. If you're listening to music and all of a sudden, nothing. So I'm wondering what this is what this is all about, but, but otherwise phenomenal amp, definitely recommended. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my growing channel. Let me know what I can do to improve. And with that, check, 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 check one, I two. I hope you enjoyed this review, too. It was brought to you by Stu. Who? Me, the lyrical G, empirical dreams, slide through like green, PC gaming, letting off steam, got bars for days like a prison inmate.
A misdemeanor's fate No debate when I wake up Okay, start my day with a cup And I pray I don't faint I'm a saint of the Most High God Of the Most High God